evening and welcome to the Local Agency Formation Commission um, on August the 16th at 5.15 p.m. Uh, Mr. Knox. Okay. Mr. Knox. I can hear you double over here. Oh, can you? Okay. So will you please uh, give your welcome and instructions? Yes. Welcome to the Kern LAFCO August meeting. A special welcome to Bakersfield City Councilman Eric Arias. This is first meeting serving in place of Commissioner Andre Gonzalez. The City of Bakersfield appointed uh, Councilmember Arias to replace Councilmember Carr as the alternate. This was revealed to me this morning, but we won't let us stop from moving forward today. So, so welcome. Uh, we also have Jose Gonzalez here today. Um, I don't know if you've actually... <laughs> okay, it's been a long time since you sat for a meeting. Yes. Uh, he, he's sitting in replace of, of Commissioner Fowler today. Um, for those in the audience, if you, there's an item that you would like to speak on, please come to the microphone so everyone can hear you, including anyone who's online. Uh, if you speak from back there, no one will, will know you said anything. So please do that. And if you're online and you'd like to speak on item, please use the raise hand function on Zoom. And uh, we will notify the chair and they will call on you at that time. And with that, uh, I turn it back to the chair. Thank you so much. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Ayon? Present. We started the Commissioner Couch? Recording. Absent. Commissioner Crump? Here. Commis Commissioner Gonzalez as alternate for Fowler? Present. Commissioner Arias for, as alternate for Gonzalez? I am here. Commissioner McKibben? Here. Commissioner Sanders? Here. Commissioner Scrivener? Here. Commissioner Zaragoza? Aye. Roll call complete. Thank you so much. So let's all uh, stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I have asked Commissioner Ion to lead us in the pledge. Ready, play. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all thank you very much we'll move on to item number four for the approval of the minutes these no changes from staff no changes from staff any public comment on our minutes from may the 15th any commission comment or questions regarding the minutes Move approval. Second. Approval by uh, Scrivener and second by Crump. Crump. Second by Crump. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion, motion carried. Uh, this is for public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons desiring to address the commission on any matter not on this agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address for the record before making your presentation. Is there anyone interested in speaking? Okay, if not, um, Mr. Knox, can we move on to item six for the determination proceeding for the city of um, Tehachapi? This proposal is to annex appro approximately 10.7 acres of land located at 21501 Tucker Road in Kern County, APN number 223-110-04. Surrounding uses are commercial, residential, and vacant. This annexation was initiated by the city for the purpose of receiving city services for future commercial development. This proposal has 100% landowner consent and a CEQA notice of exemption. Madam Chair, I'd like to recuse myself on this because the city is my client, so I'm gonna leave the room for the moment. Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Mr. Knox. Yes, this proposal is to annex approx approximately 10.7 acres with one single family residence, generally located on Tucker Road in Tehachapi. The agenda indicates 1.87 acres, which is incorrect, so that is a change. Uh, the surrounding properties are commercial, residential, and vacant land. 
There are no tax increases. Uh, the county has zoned this rural residential and the city general commercial, which is a, which is a change, which makes the, the one residence uh, non-conforming. Our understanding is their, their idea is to develop as commercial and, and tear the house down at some point. But that's not been finalized in, in any way at this point. Um, there is no ag land conversion. Uh, it's consistent with commission pol policies, conforms to the assessor parcels. We have an indemnification agreement. There's no functional overlap and no change in water supply. CEQA is handled by notice of exemption. Affected and overlapping agencies and districts were notified and no comments were provided. The process required by the Cort Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act have been followed, including notice to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. Annex annexation to the city has 100% landowner consent. The city has requested that notice hearing and pro protest hearing be waived. It is recommended that the commission consider the environmental document adopted by the applicant, waive notice hearing and protest hearing, and approve annexation number 1811, C to Hatchby, number 86. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Is there any public comment on this particular matter? Seeing none, any uh, commission comment or question? Move approval on staff's recommendation. Have we have a motion by Scribner? Second. Second by Ion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. So second item under number six is uh, City of Arvin Extension of Services. Consideration of the proposed extension of sewer services outside of the city's boundaries. The extension of service will be to one parcel zone commercial of approximately 6.67 acres for the purpose of a proposed tire shop. CEQA is solved by notice of exemption, prepared and adopted by the City of Arvin. Mr. Knox. This is a project that's been around for several years, bouncing back and forth between the city and the county with multiple planners and administrators without much luck determining which jurisdiction this potential project should be built. Today, this proceeding moves forward with an extension of services for sewer, uh, and the city of Arvin will soon be bringing forward an annexation of this property. At an undetermined time in the future, the property owner would like to build a tire shop near the corner of Comanche and Bear Mountain. This property is adjacent to the city and meets all the uh, Cortese Knox Hertzberg requirements. It is within the sphere of influence. The property owner will pay the connection fees. The city has adopted a notice of exemption. Due to an oversight by the city of Arvin staff, the indemnification agreement, nor the MOU with the property owner were taken, to, taken before the city council for approval. As a condition of approval, LAFCO will receive a signed indemnification agreement and a copy of the MOU and payment before it issuing a certificate of completion. It is my recommendation to consider the environmental document and approve the extension of services for the City of Arvin, contingent on application for annexation, signed indemnification agreement, MOU, and payment. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Any public comment on the City of Arvin extension of services? Any commission comments or questions? Having none, can I have a motion, please? I'll make the motion. Okay. Se second. Motion by Gonzalez, second by Ione. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Next up, we have notice of public hearings for the Kern Tulare Water District. I believe Mr. Knox will read all three of these, or excuse me, both of these together. Yeah, I'll make a, pr a joint presentation. Thank and, you. And I believe we can handle this with one vote as well. Okay. Uh, this is for a d detachment of nine parcels. Uh, uh, using the current letter lettering system, this is Kern Tulare's 32nd detachment. Uh, there are likely more that were processed by the county previous to LAFCO's authority, and I believe I see a pattern. Uh, this detachment contains nine parcels. There's nothing unusual about these detachments. Some property owners have not been responsive to attempts to get a signed letter of consent. Therefore, the proceeding does not have 100% consent, and the property uh, and the protest hearing is required. 
as the clear, district clearly wants to get smaller, not larger, it makes sense that they would re reduce the sphere of influence to match the boundaries. There is no tax increase. Uh, it's consistent with commission policies, conforms to assessor parcels. Zoning remains the same. Uh, the general plan, regional transportation specific plan are consistent. There's no ag land conversion. We have an indemnification agreement and there's no functional overlap. No more or less water will be consumed by this, these detachments. And this is handled by a notice of exemption for CEQA purposes. The process required for the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. It is recommended that commission consider the environmental doc document adopted by the applicant, do not waive notice hearing and protest hearing and approve with conditions 1812 sphere of influence reduction and number 1814 Kernsleary Water District Detachment number AF. Question? Yes, sir. Um, Thank you. Uh, Mr. Zaragoza. Right. Uh, just trying to confirm what is the uh, action, and you say a vote based on conditions. So the vote to, uh, is to approve the sequel document plus anything else? You are considering the sequel document. You're not adopting it. Okay. They, they've already adopted it a CEQA document. So we just consider it as a responsible agency, okay. not lead agency. And then you're taking two actions. One is the detachment of the nine properties. Second is reducing the sphere to be coterminous with the, with the reduction in their district size. Right. Uh, the condition is in the indemnification agreement. That's standard language within all our. We don't need 100% landowner consent? We do. If we if there was a request for a waiver of the protest hearing, without 100%, we're not allowed to waive protest. So we're going to have a protest hearing before the next commission meeting. Okay. So is it clear to say that the, the protest hearing outcome is not a condition? It's it's already w written within law that it if they if 50% plus one protest. The, the item dies, the proceeding dies. So our approval goes away? Yes. That, that wasn't clear. I thought it was a done deal, even though they're going to have a protest hearing. But what you're saying is, if the 50 plus one uh, disapprove, this action is mute, doesn't Correct. vote for it. OK, as long as I know that, because <laughs> that wasn't clear. Uh, and I know we've discussed this. I'll, I'll confuse you even further next month when we bring a formation which requires a vote by the commission, a mm -hmm. protest hearing, and then an election. <laughs> <laughs> as, long as, as long as this condition has that understanding by everybody before they vote, and just to confirm, because we do have a few extra new newbies on our commission, um, the county line road splits up the property into oh, the district into Tulare County and Kern County area, it would appear the uh, majority of the parcels are in the county of Kern. Therefore, Kern Lafco is predominantly the lead, not Tulare Lafco. It is, I believe it is based on assessed value. Assessed value, that's right. Not, not quantity. Not quantity yeah. of, yes. Is that still true? Yes. Okay. So this action has no Tulare Lafco ramifications of any type. They provided information to us uh, on the assessed value of those properties, on any district, any boundaries, mm -hmm. any tax um, issues with those that may be affected. So the, the assessed value uh, is much higher than in the county of Kern, based Correct. on your research. Okay. Um, let's see here. I think that pretty much is it. And. Uh, is the protest hearing a schedule like so many months afterwards? When do you think that they're going to have the protest hearing? We will send out the notice later this week, and I will do it the Monday before the next meeting. Oh, so we'll know by next meeting. Yes. Oh, and so we, I bring the results of the protest hearing back to this commission for you to ac accept. Okay, good. To confirm. Thanks for clarifying that. Way. Agreed. Yep. Okay. Any other commission comment or questions? 
Okay, can I please have a motion to move forward with this? We're going to approve both items as I understand it. Yes, this is to approve. So both. are we doing one motion for each or one motion for both? We can do it either way. One motion for both, please. Madam Chair, I'll move approval of staff's recommendation on items A and B. Okay, we have a motion by Scribner. I'll and a second by Gonzalez. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. There was a referral by Commissioner Gonzalez to consider augmenting retirement unfunded liability by pre-funding a 115 trust. Mr. Knox. That was a referral by Commissioner Andre Gonzalez, <laughs> not Jose Gonzalez. We had now have to make sure we get that correct. Um, at the May meeting, the chair appointed an ad hoc committee to address the CalPERS unfunded liability. A meeting of the ad hoc committee was scheduled for the same time as the canceled June uh, commission meeting, but several of the commissioners weren't, weren't unable to attend. The meeting was postponed to a later date. As this is not a pressing issue, I have not rescheduled a time yet, but I will when it, at a time where it works for everyone. As a separate but related note, we have received documentation from CalPERS that unfunded liability has increased from $698,000 uh, as of June 30th, 2021 to $936,000 as of June 30th, 2022. This is a $238,000 increase, pushing our minimum UAL, uh, UAL payment from $69,000 in this fiscal year to over $92,000 uh, for the 24-25 fiscal year. I will remind you that CalPERS is always two years behind uh, therefore, LAFCO is, um, they're, they're looking at numbers, they're, they're showing us the numbers from two years ago. Two years ago in the middle of COVID, everyone lost money in the stock market, I think, but they did particularly bad. Um, uh, in the two years since, the stock market has rebounded and they seem to be doing much better. So hopefully we get some of this back. Um, but still, it's, it's a big jump to take in, in, in one year's time from 69 to 92,000. So that's a if I do my math right, $23,000 more um, that we will have to spend this next year just on principal payment for our retirement system. Okay. Is there any public comment on this? Seeing none, any commission comment or questions? Uh, th actually, there's no vote required on this. That was, a mis that was a mistake on okay. the agenda. That Sorry. was my next this question. Is, this is informational. Okay, information only. Okay. So no, no commission comment or questions. Okay, moving on to general business. Uh, approval of monthly expense lists number 2304, 05, and 06. Chair, I do have one comment. Uh, on the Ju July monthly expense, the July credit card statement shows a personal charge that I mistakenly used the LAFCO purchasing card to buy several items for myself. Um, a little embarrassed by that. After consulting with our accountant, the, on the best procedure to fix this, I wrote a check to LAFCO for the amount to cover the costs. Thank Just you so very much. there's transparency and okay. my mistake of spending LAFCO money on personal stuff. And anyway. Okay. So may I ask for any commission comments or questions? I'll yeah. move approval of items A, B, and C. So we have a motion by Scribner to approve items A, B, and C. I need a second. Second. Second by um, Mr. Crump. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. And moving on to item D under general business, CSDA mid-year le uh, legislative report 2023. Mr. Knox. Included in your packet is a copy of the California Special District Association mid-year report. This provides a broad overview of top priority bills for CSDA. In reading these, you might notice there is not a LAFCO specific bill on the list. Uh, Cal LAFCO is working on language to address the indemnity, indemnity lawsuit that happened in San Luis Obispo County a couple of years ago. In addition, Cal LAFCO is looking to clean up old principal acts that are unclear between the definition of subsidiary district 
improvement districts, zones of benefit, etc. Neither of these is expected to be seen in legislative form until at least next year at the earliest. I continue to serve on the CSD Legislative Committee. As the only LAFCO person on the committee, I'm often looked to for perspective on LAFCO issues. This provides a unique opportunity to shape the conversation around, around the LAFCO-related bills. So I feel there's, there's some good value in me continuing to be on that committee. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Any executive officer items you want to present? I have several. <laughs> Uh, you warned I, me. I, I did. It's been three months since we've met, so a couple of things have happened. A couple of things are coming up. Let me start with what's coming up. Uh, I will be attending the CSDA conference at the end of this month. This is my first time at this conference. Uh, C Commissioner McKibben, are you heading there this year? I hope to, hope to see you there. Uh, I'll be checking out this out to see whether it's beneficial to send staff and potentially commissioners to this conference in the future. So... This is kind of my test run for that. The other conference is the CalAFCO conference. Uh, the early bird registration is passed. There are no rooms available at the conference hotel. You will miss the first day because we have a commission meeting uh, on that Monday, uh, on that Wednesday, sorry. But I don't want to discourage any of you who wish to attend. Um, but I don't want, um, if you still are inter interested, please contact Ms. Menchaca uh, for details. Uh, our deadline is August 31st uh, for going to that. I have a hard time keeping track of when I've supposedly taken the ethics course. Uh, if you know you haven't completed your ethics certificate or haven't provided a copy to Ms. Menchaca, with, uh, please do so ASAP. If you, like me, don't know whether your ethics certificate is up this year, please stop by and discuss this with Ms. Menchaca or, or after, the, after the meeting or call her, tomorrow, call her in the near future so we get that straight. At a previous min meeting, I mentioned uh, that we are looking for someone to re replace Juliet Granger, uh, who, has who has administered our health reimbursement account since they were first implemented close to 20 years ago. We have found a replacement. Rochelle Munoz, who Patty has worked with in the past, has agreed to take over. Juliet has graciously, graciously agreed to teach her how she has administered the process over the years and answer any questions Rochelle may have. Uh, Juliet is a beautiful soul and will definitely be missed by us. But after 20 years, she retired 20 years ago from being an accountant and kept doing this for us <laughs> all this time afterwards. So she will very, very much be missed. A person who's not going to be missed is Rebecca Moore, who is back working for us. <laughs> wow. Uh, she has returned from the retirement abyss and has rejoined LAFCO part-time. I have her working on five-year sphere of influence review questionnaires. Previously, I informed the commission that our efforts last year only received about one-third of the questionnaires returned. Rebecca is nice, nicely harassing special district staff until they conform with her will and return the required information. Uh, for a short while, we entertained that uh, the city of Bakersfield hiring Rebecca as a consultant to help the city staff get up to speed on how to do LAFCO related issues. Uh, that idea died with some liability uh, concerns and so it never happened. Uh, the city of Bakersfield is not the only agency that struggles to educate planning staff on LAFCO. We are seeing a lack of experience of the planners we are working with across all levels of local government. When I first started six years ago, there was experienced planners at most of the cities and many of the special districts that we see over and over again. They knew LAFCO and we knew them. Between the baby boomers retiring, COVID disruption, and a shortage of planners, agencies are relying on planners right out of college. Nobody teaches LAFCO in college. It's a foreign language to them when they first come to us. So we're spending a lot of time educating them on how to fill out an application, how how the maps work and legal descriptions work just basic items that they have difficult understanding um, and we're spending a lot of time on that we we encourage early and continual communications with applicants throughout the process as there are many decisions decisions to be made during an application process unfortunately mr rice and to a lesser extent miss Menchaka and myself are spending an exorbitant amount of time teaching and correcting mistakes these planners turn in insufficient maps, legal descriptions, 
inaccurate application of deficiency, deficiencies in CEQA compliance, to name a few. Yeah, I, I recognize that I am right now being a complainer, but I don't do so without coming up with a solution. And here's my latest idea. To educate planners on the ins and outs of LAFCO, we've been mulling around an idea of developing a webinar series. We would be performing, we would, th this would be a platform where we can share our knowledge and specific information needed for local, local planners. It's also a place to answer questions and focus dialogue. Not only to educate planners, but also to contemplate ways we can improve LAFCO's approach. The webinar concept con uh, consists of recording the webinars and breaking them up into segments that could be easily accessed from our website. Gabe and Tom in the back, who I haven't had a chance to talk to about this yet, uh, could help with the post-production. Uh, this would create a resource for planners to answer questions they may have without always coming back to staff every time for answers. Uh, we don't have a timeline on when a standalone website will be up and running. We have been busy to the point where we haven't been able to send out the request for a proposal for the internet service company yet. You did uh, approve in our budget money for to do that. Uh, as we cannot place the webinar videos on the county webpage uh, that is provided for us for free, thank you county, we have to complete the web website implement implementation first and then come back to, for the webinar idea. Um, I'm starting to look forward to the 2024 commission meeting schedule. I recently had a conversation with Mr. Hallen with the city of Bakersfield about moving our schedule back to the fourth Wednesday next year. He didn't know if that was possible, but he said he would look into it. Moving to the third Wednesday has complicated our notices, provided the commission with untimely AP and conflicts with items such as Cal AFCO's conference, which is happening this year. If you happen to see Mr. Helen, encourage him to return to our historical fourth Wednesday schedule. Lastly, we are preparing to bring a, the formation proceeding for Lost Hills Community Service District to the commission at the next meeting. Uh, this is one of the most complicated proceedings, proceedings we have seen in several years. I ask you to take extra notice of the agenda item when you get to your pack, when you get your packet for the next meeting. And with that, our next meeting is scheduled for September 20th, and that is the end of my report. Mr. Knox, you're full of surprises tonight. <laughs> okay. I have a question. Okay. Um, so Rebecca is doing the sphere of influ influence calls. What's her percentage of success? We had a third. I believe she's gotten, out of 80 districts, she's got another 15. Is that about right? She's doing good. Yeah, yeah. She, she's making progress. Great. Uh, she's both calling them, sending them email no, uh, reminders, and then calling them back again. Um, I joke with her that she's the nicest mean person I know, um, which was perf perfect for her to, to, um, to uh, stay on these folks and make sure it gets done, so. That's her excellent history of LAFCO. And we love having her around. She's, fam Absolutely. she's family. Absolutely. Any other um, commissioner questions or comments this evening? Um, I was going to recommend that staff report to LAFCO next time and discuss AB 399. And it's uh, currently being fast-tracked. It is going to affect LAFCO. Um, right now it's a big issue with San Diego LAFCO a uh, a water authority there wanted to uh, certain parcels wanted to detach from the San, Wa San Diego Public Water Authority District and unfortunately it's being tied up in a bill there's more than one or two items with 399 and um, CalF goes against it and uh, basically would require uh, not only a detachment vote but a vote within the whole district to allow those parcels that want to detach. And the reason they want to detach is that they want to save money with another water purveyor. The, it's a farming bill. And majority of the farmers there, that a lot of them are avocado farmers, are in support of not changing anything. Basically, it would require um, LAFCO to have two concurrent elections. But I've given some information right now to Bud if you want to look at it, and uh, it may or may not affect us right away. It may get, it may die, 
But if it goes forward, we'll need to par uh, prepare for that. So I am aware of the bill. Okay. Um, I think I think the situation for Cal LAFCO and for all LAFCOs is is this bill by do by performing these acts by legislation taking power away from LAFCO to do our jobs. Correct. It uh, allows us to not be as uh, perform our own self control. Right. right. Or local um, control by those folks who want to yeah, be attached. I'm so sorry. In, in general, Cal LAFCO will, will oppose any bill that stops a LAFCO from being able to. So if this happened in Kern County, they would they would do the same, even though we're not a member. Um, they, they, would, they would oppose it for the same reason. It's not really an op op opposition of the action itself. Um, it's really a fight between different, different factions within San Diego County. Um, it's about whether LAFCO continues to have the authority to, to make these decisions. Well, in the event that, that bill passes, I don't know what the final version will be. I guess we'll, we'll determine, but how, how will that affect LAFCO procedures? Would it require a second, a second election, concurrent election? It's just something that maybe we should track and then let us know how yeah, it's going to I, affect. I will, I will come know, back with right. more information in September. But, what I was told, uh, it's uh, something that may happen this fiscal year. So, all right, thanks. There are other bills that are in the legislature that are specific to certain special districts, certain certain actions of, um, you know, there's there's healthcare district bills and things like that that do have an effect on on the LAFCOs individually in each county, but not specifically on us. So I'm aware of those. When I said earlier there's no LAFCO specific, I meant there's no general ones that affect Kern LAFCO when, directly. Would this AB 399 affect Kern LAFCO? Uh, not directly, I don't believe. Mm. But I was I, told I, it was. I, I, I didn't read it, but we'll, we'll discuss that later. Yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Any other questions or comments? All right. If there's no further business to discuss, uh, the next scheduled meeting is September the 20th at 515 and the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>